Introduction to Microcontrollers In order to design an embedded system, we need to learn about the heart of every embedded device, that is microcontroller. Microcontroller is an integrated circuit that contains electronic computing unit and logic unit, together known as a CPU, memory, program memory, and data memory, IO ports, which include input and output ports, and a few other components integrated on a single chip. Basically, a microcontroller consists of the following components. The first is a central computing unit, or we call it a central processing unit. The next one is a program memory. It could be ROM, read-only memory, or flash. And you have a data memory, it's a RAM random access memory then we will have uh, timers and counters then IVO ports these are input and output ports then serial communication interface these could be SPI, I2C, UART and there are plenty of uh, communication interfaces that are available next you will have a clock circuit these are oscillator circuit and the controller also includes interrupt mechanism. Also, the peripherals like SPI, the serial peripherals, interface, I2C, ADC, DAC, CAN, USB, and many more. So here is a black diagram of the STM32F40X microcontroller series. So yes, so it looks quite complicated in the beginning, but as you go through the course or as you go through the, the videos, you'll be you'll have more clarity on on the microcontroller architecture. Well, the key components in the block diagram. The first key component is the ARM Cortex M4 processor. The core of STM32 F40X microcontroller is an ARM Cortex M4 processor which provides the processing power for executing the program instructions. So if you see the top left corner, you can see the ARM Cortex M4, which can run up to 168 MHz uh, clock. So this is FPU program unit. And you can see that this is the unit that executes your code. So this is the uh, heart of your microcontroller. The next key component is memory and flash. This section includes various types of memory, such as RAM, that means random access memory, flash memory, and you have RAM used for temporary data storage during program execution while flash memory stores the program code and configuration settings so if you see the block diagram you can see that there is there are different uh, memory that are available these are external memory controller this is sram ps ram nor flash pc card nand, NAND flash this is basically uh, which can be interfaced with extra memory, which can be interfaced to your controller. But if you see here, there is flash up to 1 MB. This is a flash memory that uh, we are talking about. This contains code. This will contain the code and if any static configurations that are needed for your applications. And you have this SRAM and SRAM 12 KB and SRAM 16 KB. This is the random access memory that is available in this series of microcontrollers. The next components is a system bus. The system bus connects the processor to the memory and flash components, allowing data and instructions to follow between them. Here, if you see, uh, there is a bus called AHB, bus matrix 8S7M. So this is the system bus, which enables the memory and other 
uh, components to connect to the controller or the connect to the central processing unit so that is the use of the system bus so this is called as ahp and the next component is the peripheral bus the peripheral bus connects the processor to the various peripherals available on the microcontroller such as a timers communication interface like uart spi i2c then adcs and more so if you see this block diagram so you can see that apb2 here it's 84 megahertz and here apb1 which runs on i think 42 megahertz max so these are the peripheral buses that actually connects this to the uh, of course via the system bus to the uh, cpu so that is the understanding here so you can see that there are a uh, lot of uh, timers here the timer like this is the RTC, then timer two, timer three, till timer 14, then you have USRT, then UART, then you have SPI, then I2C bus, then you have CAN bus. So all of these are connected to the APB1, the address peripheral bus one. And then on the left side, you have see the USRT16, SPI1, you have this temperature sensor, ADC1, ADC2, ADC3. Also, you have these PWM channels here. Then SOID or the MMC, the external backup. So all of these are connected to APB2 or address, address peripheral bus 2. So this is how the buses are used to communicate between the peripherals and the uh, the CPU. The next is IO peripherals. This section comprises the input or output peripherals like GPIOs, general purpose input output pins, which allow the microcontroller to interface with the external devices and sensors. So this is basically uh, what are the different IOs that it has interfacing the uh, IOs here you can see GPIO port A, port B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. So these are different ports that are available. Of course, the numbers vary depending on the uh, the microcontroller, which a particular microcontroller you use in the series. But the understanding here is that all these GPIOs provide or enable us to connect any sensor or uh, or control any device. Of course, we need to drive these, drive those circuits using these GPIOs. We'll, we'll also learn how do we do that in the future. So, well, so if you're a beginner, information in this, uh, in the above blog diagram would look overwhelming, but stay with me till the end of this course you will understand most of the stuff present here and learn to use this information in developing embedded software so what is important to note that yes it looks complicated but it's not hard to learn and master the the skill of of learning to use microcontroller to your applications so well uh, that's all for this episode. Next, you'll learn some of the fundamental concepts in microcontrollers and you will develop better understanding of microcontrollers and embedded systems in general. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more projects, courses, tutorials, and tools.